folks, I'm Tom Vassell. I love playing games and I love teaching and I've loved combining the two of them. Uh, for many years I taught high school and I was always looking for games that I could use to teach things and games that aren't boring. Well, one of the hardest subjects to find a game for, period, is science, right? There's lots of games that teach math, lots of games to teach English, lots of games to teach history. Science is one of the harder ones. But fortunately, there are many companies who are stepping forth into the fray to make games that teach science. Now, the amount of science that something teaches um, and how good of a game it is, you know, those are going to vary. But hopefully this list will give you some good jumping off points and some games that you might find that you can help to use to teach some basic scientific principles. I've tried to pick games that are mostly in print or that you can find, uh, you can find at least some of these for sure. Number 10 is Terraforming Mars. Now this one is a more complex style game for sure. And it's also about kind of future science because it's about terraforming Mars, which obviously hasn't happened yet. But the game itself is good as players are, are gonna be taking cards and building up a little bit of a, an engine in front of them to use these cards to slowly get water and oxygen and plants on Mars. And it's not this, you know, there's no aliens or any of that. It's hard science, or at least some of it's, you know, speculative science, terraforming Mars. Number nine is the Manhattan Project Energy Empire. Now, Manhattan Project Energy Empire is a game that is about energy. You're building different uh, wind energy and nuclear energy, but some of this energy causes pollution, and so you also have to use, you have to get resources to build these, these uh, different uh, factories and things. You're trying to get points. You're a different country of the world, trying to get points in various ways, and produce, everything needs this energy, and you can produce a lot of energy but then you have to deal with the pollution too, and so you can try a strategy of being green and having as little pollution as possible, or foregoing that and just getting energy out there. Either way, it has some good principles behind it. Number eight is viral. Now viral looks silly, and it's supposed to look silly, because viruses are really not a fun thing, but this game is one in which you are viruses attacking a human body. And there's a couple things this is useful for. It shows how all the different organs are connected to, to, to each other with veins and capillaries, and, and as you uh, move around and infect the body, as the game progresses, doctors are gonna be constantly kicking you out. Then you'll mutate and come back, and doctors will kick you out. I'm pretty sure the guy survives at the end of the game. And like I said, there's some silliness involved into it, but at the same time, it also teaches some good things about anatomy. Number seven, I can put two games here, Fauna or Terra. Um, Fauna is a trivia game, which many people find trivia games boring about animals, but in this one, you are finding spots in the world where these animals live, or how heavy the animal is, or how long its tail is. Um, Terra does the same thing, it has a little bit of animals in it, but also has different spots around the world and various things. And you are guessing, but you also get points for if you're close. And if you think someone else knows the answer, you can put close to their answer. This takes trivia and makes it actually very fun. So Fauna or Terra. Number six is Zendo. Now this game is a pure logic game, and I'm gonna be doing a separate logic games list, but I want to put this one on the list because it teaches you how to come to a conclusion, how to come to, you know, to take a theory and make it a fact, to take a supposition and make it a theory. And this game does a good job of that, where you'll take these little shapes and put them there, and there's some rule. Maybe there's two red shapes, that's the rule. And you say, this group works, this group doesn't work. And everyone else has to figure out these rules by saying, does this work? Does this not work? And I like the flow, and I think this is very, you know, this correlates right into working like, for example, with the scientific method. That's Zendo. Number five is Ion Compound Building. Now this is a game from Genius Games, and honestly, there's two of their games on this list, but I could have put, I think, oh, I have all, they have five right now, and they're continually making more, and they are taking really good games and mixing them with really strong scientific themes. And this is one of those, and this one you have a hand of cards, you are taking one of the cards, putting it in front of you, and passing them around, and you are building atoms. And you are trying to, get, different atoms will give you points, but you need to have positive neutrons and negative neutrons, and it's, it's really well done. It's easy, but it also has some good science behind it. Number four is the new science. Now this one's kind of an odd one here because, well this first of all is science in the name, but it's almost more history than it is science. But 
science is good to know about history. And so this is talking about famous scientists and you have these different scientists and they are publishing works as time goes by. You're one of these scientists. And so it shows once this was discovered, then th this could be discovered. And it kind of gives you a history of science. And you're going back and forth and, and making some decisions. But a lot, if you want to look at the history of science, this is definitely the game. Number three is compound it. This is about chemical uh, uh, compounds, uh, putting them together. It's a really fun little game. The periodic table is actually your scoring track. And so you're trying to build these chemical compounds, sometimes with other players, sometimes by yourself, through some little card play. A very good little game. Number two is photosynthesis. This is a game about plants and light. Obviously, that's what photosynthesis is. And it works really well as two to four players. You're placing your trees, seeing these trees grow. You're trying to get light, block other trees from getting light. The game itself is an incredibly simple, devious, fun game, but it has that good science theme in the background, photosynthesis. And then number one is another game from Genius Games, and this is Cytosis. And this is about cells in the human body. And in this game, you are building these cells and trying to get, there's all, there's so much terminology in this game that I didn't even know existed because it's actual factual science. In fact, I know one of the uh, scientists who worked on the game and he talked to me about the fact that they double checked everything. And at the same time, this is what we call a worker placement game where you're putting these guys on the, on the board and they'll give you some of this and they'll give you some of this resource that you need to build these cells. Definitely a game that's a very solid game, but also a lot of scientific terminology in it. And the book explains it, the rule book explains it too. It's fun and educational, which is where I would put all of these games on this list. So those are my top 10 games that teach science. I hope this helps you out. Maybe you have other games I did not mention. Put those in the comments below for people. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and this is The Dice Tower.